in a, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I did a part one on business continuity as it related to planning and issues and features and tools uh, that you needed uh, to enable uh, a BC plan uh, locally. And we covered things uh, such as redundant servers, resilient networking, high availability storage, uh, advanced embedded features, uh, mirroring and snapshots. We excluded async replication, which we'll cover today. And probably as important as making the plan, putting the hardware and applications in place, uh, we stress testing it, maintaining the plan. Uh, and this is going to guarantee uh, your objectives um, for a local implementation. Part two. Uh, is is going to cover disaster recovery uh, in the sense of uh, impending doom or problems at the local site and uh, using um, these steps as part of your plan to uh, enable continued functions or quick repair. Right? There are three key groups in, in a disaster that must be covered in every plan. The first one is the Sudden Disaster Occurrence Procedure, an SDOP. Right? Uh, these are policies and procedures when, when there's the unexpected disaster, a building fire, sudden weather occurrences, uh, flooding, uh, unsafe chemical intrusion. This sounds funny, but a lot of facilities, you'll see it on the news, uh, they have gas leaks, uh, different things like that, uh, or even an unexpected long-term power outage. And now part of uh, your SDLP planning unfortunately, are terrorist attacks um, for your larger facilities. Or if your facility is located in a building that would be considered a target, you might be the small guy in the 100-story uh, tower, but the tower itself could be a, a, a highly prized target. Um, disaster avoidance procedures, uh, or DAP situations, uh, this is where you know something is, is coming. Uh, hurricanes, uh, a real bad front uh, with a full string of uh, tornadoes. Uh, you're on a uh, flood plane and the water is coming up. You know that something is going to happen, forest fires, civil unrest. So the advantage and the difference between an SDOP and a DAP is you know it's happening, you can plan for it. You can close things out in an orderly fashion. You can switch operations to a remote site. Uh, a much better uh, situation to be in than an SDOP. Uh, however, you still need to plan for it. You, you need to uh, train and make sure everybody's on the same page. And the last one in a, in a disaster situation uh, is the unexpected data loss. Now, a lot of your unexpected data loss is going to happen it's going to happen at your local site or multiple primary sites where you do data processing. Uh, but the reason it's included under disaster recovery planning is if you lost all of that data at your local site, what would you do? How would you recover it? So uh, again, that's why it's listed as one of the three key groups when you're doing disaster recovery planning. Uh, I, I've got a nice fancy definition of disaster recovery and what it is. Right? Let's let's just simplify. Disaster recovery is not a recovery of data. That's a small part of it. Okay. What it is, it's really the planned restoration of services and current data with the dependence on a carefully planned archiving of data. Meaning, you need to make a decision: Are we going to sustain services? Um, Yes or no? Does that fit into the budget? Do you have the hardware? Do you have the facilities? But you always have to be able to return current data uh, when services are available. And you will use archiving data to lessen your budget and to create staging of recovery in a dis uh, from a disaster situation. Uh, disaster recovery may require local or remote services. Uh, the recovery may or may not uh, require duplicate sites or remote data only sites. It varies on the disaster. It, it varies on your recovery time objectives and your recovery point objectives. And, and the big one is your budget. Right? I think we would all love to have a remote data center. Uh, however, if it, it just isn't necessary given 
certain things that would happen in a disaster, IT might be one of the last things that you need to recover. Uh, if IT is the first thing you need to recover and get back online as a corporation, um, then then you put more weight on a, on a full failover site. One of the metrics or one of the things that you want to establish right in the very beginning, and remember, it's it's not written until the plan is complete. Nothing's written in stone. Is your recovery time objective, right? Uh, the, this is your goal for how quickly you need data, different kinds of data represented uh, by use in different applications uh, and so forth. How, how, what's your recovery time objective uh, to get things back up and going, running, at a minimum level? and at a secondary, even a third or fourth level. Right? So you need to look at your, your system. In this case, I'm going to pick um, uh, my favorite company, Daystrom Technologies, which is my brother's. And yes, he is a Star Trek freak. Um, but he basically, we've broken it up into major sections of uh, IT, uh, accounting, manufacturing, product development, email, general documents, Word documents, spreadsheets, uh, images, those types of things, and human resources information. We apply the priority and a recovery time objective, in this case, first stage, uh, in terms of hours. And as you can see, generally speaking, your priority is going to the higher the priority, the shorter the amount of time uh, that you want to have associated uh, with that RTO.